Today I want to talk a little bit about Hardy-Weinberg and in particular where the allele frequencies are coming from when we're doing a Hardy-Weinberg. So when we're talking about a Hardy-Weinberg population, we're talking about a population that's in equilibrium where the allele frequencies are not changing. So there's going to be no change in our allele frequencies. So what we can do with Hardy-Weinberg is for one of these kinds of populations, we can actually predict what the genotype frequencies will be in the next generation because there are no allele frequency changes. So let's start out just thinking about a population that has two alleles. We're gonna just call these for now, big A and little a. The book calls them A1 and A2, that's fine too. So the frequency of big A, meaning the number of big A alleles over the total number of alleles in the population, we're gonna just call this number P. And this is a number that's gonna be between zero and one. If the number was one, then the big A allele would be 100% in the population. If it's zero, that means that there are zero big A alleles in the population. The frequency of little a, we're gonna set this to Q. And again, this can be zero to one. If we only have two alleles in the population, then the total frequency of big A plus the total frequency of little a is gonna have to equal to one. This is our first thing that we figure out when we're doing one of these. This is gonna be true whether or not we're in Hardy-Weinberg. As long as we have a two allele system, this is what we're gonna see. So what is gonna happen when these guys start mating? What kind of genotype frequencies are we gonna to expect to see in this population? So we're gonna be thinking about the gametes in the population. And so we're gonna have eggs and sperm. And the eggs and the sperm can be two different types. An egg can either carry a big A allele or a little a allele, and a sperm can either carry a big A allele or a little a allele. Now keep in mind this is just one genetic locus. We're only looking at one genetic locus in Hardy-Weinberg. We're not looking at all of them. So to figure out the genotypes, we can just make a little Punnett square. Along one axis, we're gonna put all of the possible sperm. Now on the other axis, we're gonna put all of the possible eggs. So here, we're gonna have our egg axis here, and here we're gonna have our sperm axis going down. So our sperm can be big A or little a, and our eggs can also be big A or little a. So when we have a big A sperm meet a big A egg, that's the only way, or a big A egg meet a big A sperm, that's the only way we're gonna get a big A, big A, right? So the frequency of finding this big A, big A is just gonna be the proportion of big A eggs times the proportion of big A sperm. Right, so that's going to equal the frequency of the big A sperm compared to all the sperm, so that'll be P times the frequency of all of the big A, a big A eggs, which will also be P. So this is going to equal to P squared. So the P squared is the frequency of the big A, big A genotype. Our next genotype is going to be big A little a, and the frequency that we find this genotype is going to be the frequency of getting one of these big A eggs and one of these little a sperm. So that's gonna be P for the big A egg times Q for the little a sperm. Our next genotype that we have on here is gonna be another big A little a, but this time we're getting the big A from the sperm and the little a from the egg. And this is also gonna have the same frequency as this one here. We're gonna have a big A frequency of P times the little a frequency of Q. Now here our last square is going to be reserved for the little a egg plus the little a sperm or the little a sperm plus the little a egg. And so the frequency of this is going to be the frequency of the little a eggs, which is Q, times the frequency of the little a sperm, which is also Q. And so this is going to give us Q squared. So now remember when we're talking about statistics, when we say that two things have to happen at the same time in order to get a result, that's an and statement. To get a big A, big A genotype, we need a big A sperm and a big A egg. And in that case, we multiply the two terms together. If we have an or statement, meaning that to get a big A, little a phenotype, we can have a big A sperm, sorry, a big A egg and a little a sperm, or a big A sperm and a little a egg, we add if we have or. There are two possibilities here. So because of that, our genotype frequencies, AA, so the frequency of AA, 
the frequency of big A little a and the frequency of little a little a. These are going to be P squared. There's only one possibility, no or statement. This one is going to be 2PQ, PQ plus PQ, so 2 times PQ, and this one is going to be Q squared. Since these are all of the genotypes in our population, if we add them all together, they have to equal to 1, okay? because these are the only genotypes we have. So the frequencies of all of these genotypes must equal to 1.